Let's talk about punctuation and mechanics. So let's begin with capitalization. Some of this is probably very obvious, but let's just go ahead and go through it. Capitalize the first word of a sentence. That's just the bottom line, very important first thing to remember. When you're quoting somebody and doing a quotation, you capitalize the first word in your quoted sentence. So even if it's not someone's name, you would capitalize whatever this word is right here at the beginning of the quote. Always, always, always capitalize the word I. Otherwise, it just looks like lazy proofreading. This is a great slide that just shows you some of the main things that we capitalize. Names of companies, places, people, um, anything that's considered a proper noun or a specific name. People like Abraham Lincoln, Jerry Seinfeld, Tim Tebow, uh, places, Lincoln, Nebraska, so cities and states, countries. Important landmarks are capitalized. Businesses and brands, Nike, Banana Republic, Guess. Languages, if you're writing a language, it is capitalized. Names of races, ethnic groups, and nationalities are capitalized. If you're using an adjective with a country's name to describe something like Chinese noodles, you would capitalize Chinese. Units of time are capitalized, Saturday, Monday, December, February. Holidays are capitalized, but not seasons. So fall, summer, spring, and winter are not capitalized. We capitalize titles. All of the major words in a title are capitalized, whether it's a book, a movie, article, journal, etc. But we don't capitalize those little words like a, and, the, in, on, etc. Here's just a few examples for you. The exception to that rule is if one of those little words happens to be the first word of a title, then of course we capitalize it. You capitalize the first word of a salutation, like when you're writing a letter, and the first word at the closing. So, dear Mr. Jones, we capitalize dear. Sincerely would be capitalized. If it was sincerely yours, we would capitalize sincerely, but not yours. OK, you may not have known this, but when you're writing directions, you don't capitalize north, south, east, or west unless they refer to a place, like I love the south as a place. And then you would capitalize south, because you're naming it as a place. Let's switch gears and talk about commas. So commas are super important. They are everywhere, and we need to know where and why we use them. So it can be used to mark off different elements in a sentence. It helps the reader understand which words go together. And it can also indicate a pause in writing. Now, if you look at these examples, we have some missing commas, and they make a big impact. A panda eats, shoots, and leaves. Okay. These commas are in uh, misplaced, if you will, versus a panda eats, shoots, and leaves, which is the intended meaning. But you can see the difference that a comma can make. Here's a couple more for you. Have you eaten my child? The comma shows you that she's speaking to her child versus down in this example, have you eaten my child? No comma indicates that <laughs> it's a totally different question without the comma. The same with this funny one in the center, let's eat grandma, let's eat grandma. Which one is the correct one here? Obviously, the second one is. Let's take a look at different uses of the comma. So we use a comma when we're using um, creating a list. And a list is three or more things. So here's an example where we would have our commas after each of the items in our list. We use a comma if the sentence begins with an introductory phrase. Jumping up and down, comma, the children scream for ice cream. We use commas with coordinating conjunctions. These are called our fanboys. Fanboy stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. We use the comma before the fanboy. Here's a few examples for you. 
We also use commas in complex sentences. So if a comma begins with a dependent clause, then we put a comma at the end of the dependent clause before the independent clause. Because Jim took great notes in every class and did all of the readings, comma, he earned the highest grade in the class. He earned the highest grade in the class is an independent clause set off by an, a dependent clause, and that's the definition of a complex sentence. Now, if you put your dependent clause at the end of the sentence, you don't need a comma between the independent and the dependent. We use commas with transitional expressions. So you must come to class otherwise, comma, you will not learn. This list here is a nice grouping of transitional expressions. You'll use transitional expressions quite a bit in your writing this term, so it's good to know that you do include a comma after them. You should complete all of the assigned readings, semicolon, Furthermore, comma, you should take notes while you read. Furthermore is our transitional expression, and that's why we put a comma after it. Now, when you're doing quotes, a comma goes right after the word said before you introduce your quoted statement. Now, if the quote is a statement and comes before the name of the person who spoke, use a comma at the end of the statement. So we have here, I studied hard and I am ready for the test, comma, quotes, Jenny said. We wouldn't put a period here, instead we add a comma. We also use commas with interrupters, extra information, non-essential clauses, positives, and direct address. So Bill Gates who is the founder of Microsoft. This is extra information, so we set it off with commas. Rasmussen College, which is more than 110 years old, is a well-respected institution of higher learning. And a positive is basically when you are renaming whoever the sentence is about. Kay's hairstylist, comma, the girl with the great highlights. This isn't a positive because it's been renamed. So we set that off with a comma. Commas with dates. This is very tricky for students. Use a comma when a date is made up of two or more parts, and if both of the parts are words or both numbers. So the party was scheduled for Friday, comma, June 11th, comma, 2011. Classes start on October 1st, comma, October 31st is Halloween. See here we have no comma separating October and 31st. Those stay together without a comma. Use commas to set apart each major piece in a sentence, the address, the city, and the state. Use a comma with a geographic location that has two or more parts, so like Miami, Florida. You would use a comma between Miami and Florida, and then after Florida, um, unless it's at the end of the sentence, as in the second example with France at the end of the sentence. Let's take a quick little comma quiz. So, which one has the correct comma placement? Take a look and read through each of these. And hopefully you selected B. I took Angie, comma, the one with the freckles. We have to have those commas in both places to set off that a positive so that we know that we are renaming Angie. Hopefully this little presentation on punctuation and mechanic mechanics has helped you have a firmer grasp. If not, please visit the content in your e-textbook covering punctuation.